Hi, I'm Michael Strauss from Scholastic, and I'm so excited to be coming to you live from the Microsoft Lounge in Venice Beach, California. Welcome to the over 1,000 classrooms joining us from dozens of countries across the world to kick off Teach Graphics Week. Scholastic has teamed up with the Microsoft Educator Community and Skype in the Classroom to celebrate graphic novels in a big way including Skype visits from 10 graphic novelists all week long, a Twitter chat with New York Times bestselling author and illustrator Kazu Kabuishi, and even a chance to win a graphics library. You can enter just by telling us why you love graphic novels. Winners are going to be announced on World Read Aloud Day on February 16th. You can find out more at the URL on the screen which we've also pinned to the chat window for you. You can also make every day World Read Aloud Day with hundreds of authors and literacy activities for your classroom all year long through Skype in the Classroom. So now you may be asking, what is graphics? Who better to tell us about the graphics imprint than David Saylor, its founder and editorial director? Hi, I'm David Saylor. I'm the founder and editorial director for the Graphics Imprint, which began in 2005 with the publication of Jeff Smith's incredible epic, Bone. I started the Graphics Imprint because when I was eight and nine years old, I really loved comics. And what I wanted to do when I became a publisher was to start an imprint that would create the kind of comics that I loved when I was a kid. As everyone knows, graphic novels and comics are very popular right now. And one thing that's fantastic about what we've been doing is that it's reached kids in a huge way across the country in classrooms and libraries and schools. And it's also reached a popular sort of turning point in that many of our books are on the New York Times bestseller list, which has been really rewarding. And today our mission is the same as when we started, which is to publish age-appropriate, engaging stories for children and teens. And one thing that we've been especially good at, I think, is bringing new talent out into the world. We'll be joined by two of those talents in just a minute. But before they come out, though, I wanted to tell you three ways that you in your classroom can participate today. Your teacher can submit questions in the chat window. You can also tweet us your questions using the hashtag TeachGraphicsLive. And later in the show, we're going to be bringing your ideas to life by letting you choose the next dream scenario that Ben needs to escape from. You should see a poll in the window of this broadcast. Teachers can submit one vote per class for a setting that you would like to see Ben stuck in. He can either be in a toilet, in space, at the bottom of the ocean, in school, or shrunk to the size of a penny. And now, I'm excited to introduce to you the creators of the new book, Dream Jumper Nightmare Escape, Greg Grunberg and Lucas Turnblum. Greg and Lucas, welcome. Thank you so much. I am so excited. What's up, everybody? How you guys doing? Everybody, hands up. Oh, I can't see you. OK, good. So let's how, about, how about a toilet in space? Maybe that we could do. Let the kids have their say. OK, sorry. Okay. I can't wait so, to see what they vote on. So let's. <laughs> Get right into it. Tell us about Dream Jumper Nightmare Escape, okay. and what was your inspiration in writing it? So um, I've always been a writer and, a, and you know an actor. I've been an actor for years, but um, I have three boys, and uh, my our middle guy, who's now 17, but a few years ago when he was 13, 12 and a half, 13, he had a crazy dream, like just so vivid. You guys know what I'm talking about, like a dream where you can't get it out of your head, and it's almost like you're experiencing it, or it's a movie or something. And he woke up. And he was still thinking about it and still thinking about it. And so I went up and I was trying to put him back to sleep. And I'm cuddling with him, we're talking, we're talking. And I said, okay, so tell me about the dream. What was it? And he said, well, it wasn't, it wasn't really my dream. It was sort of like my friend's dreams. I said, what do you mean? He goes, I was like a superhero and I was able to jump in and out of my friend's dreams and save them from their worst nightmares. And I was like, what? Like immediately went crazy. I was like, that's the coolest thing ever. Tell me about it. And he's telling me all these different things and I couldn't get it out of my head. I thought, what a great idea for a movie or a TV show, you know, cause I'm an actor, I've been in these movies and stuff. 
So I talked to my best friend in the whole world, J.J. Abrams, who made Star Wars and Star Trek and all these great movies and stuff. Um, and he said, you know what? This might be a graphic novel. And me meanwhile, I don't know anything about graphic novels. Um, and so I had that in my head. And then I, because I'm an actor, if you guys don't know, I'm an actor. I've been in um, Heroes was a big TV show that I was on years ago. Your parents hopefully watch Felicity and Alias. And, but Star Wars is the big thing that I was recently in. I was Snap Wexley. Um, so speaking of that, can, yeah. can you tell me what it was like to see a character that you created come to life in, in a graphic novel? Well, it, it wasn't just me. It was like I wanted to make that happen, but I didn't know anything about graphic novels. But because I was in these sci-fi things, I was at Comic-Con, and I turned to a guy who, you know, everybody was lined up to get his autograph. He's a big award-winning, you know, illustrator and writer and whatever, Lucas Turnblum. And I said, Lucas, could this be a good idea for a graphic novel about a kid who can, you know, go in and out of dreams and dream state? And we, we immediately sparked creatively, oh, yeah. and we decided the way Harry Potter goes into the world of magic what about a kid that takes us into the world of dreams and that whole world, and is it dark? Are there good guys and bad guys? And immediately it became obvious to us that this is a great idea for a graphic novel. And then, pun intended, our dream came true when Scholastic, which is a company that, you know, publisher that, that I mean, that was a dream for them Absolutely. to say, you know what, we, we love this. And with their help, book one, after a year of working together, yep. um, you know, has, has been out and it's doing well. And book two is coming out this year. So it that, was a great thing. That's awesome, though. I love that you two met at Comic-Con. That just, it, it, it's it, cool, it's right? such a, a, a great story. Um, Lucas, since you're both writing and illustrating these mm -hmm. books, um, when you're coming up with the story, do you already have an idea of um, how you want the character to look in your mind? Mm -hmm. And uh, does that come later or do you just know? There's a basic idea of what each character will look like. But you have to work on it. You have to do a series of what are called thumbnails, which are tiny little sketches. And you do several of these things. Then you look at them and you're like, well, what works, what doesn't? And then you whittle them down to 12. And then you, you do the same thing. You're like, well, what works, what doesn't? And then you finally get to where you want to be. And then it's the show everybody else said, does this work? Is, is there something I'm missing? And then input comes in. And then you go back to the drawing board. So it is a process. It's not an immediate thing. It's a super easy process for me because I don't have to do the drawing. <laughs> so partner, if you have a great idea, partner with somebody who's an incredible genius at drawing. So, it's so, been fun, though, right? Oh my god, yes. With it's been that, incredible. since you're working together, uh, yeah. that creative process, how does it work? Um, I, I know that we, I, I saw some initial um, notes that you two had taken together mm -hmm. and had worked on the story. Um, do, you, do you write the story all at once and then illustrate, or do you do it smaller sections? I think we've got, we have like a basic idea for the story. And then what we do is either by phone, Skype, or I will come up here, or he'll go down to San Diego, which is where I live. Yeah. Um, and we'll sit and we'll just make each other laugh. We'll, and we'll just throw joke after joke into the narrative that we had, the basic idea that we had created. And then that's how these work. That's why and there's so an, much humor. As an actor, I will act it out. I'll yeah. say, what about this? What about this? And we'll, we'll pitch each other. Yeah. And it's really fun. By the way, I have to say, there are geniuses out there that can do this by themselves. But collaborating with someone else is so much fun. It is great. If you find, if there's a buddy, if there's a friend, if there's somebody that you've always wanted to work with that you look up to in your class, partner with them. Come up with ideas. Because yeah. you'll, bounce, you'll draw something and I'll be like, oh, what about this? It's never, nah. It's yeah. always positive and sure. fun, and, and it's been great for us. There, there's a part of me that wishes that I had some video of the, the two of you <laughs> acting out. Well, there's the, plenty the of scenes. Skype. I don't think we've ever, we've ever, we always Skype. That's yeah. how we do it. And, yeah. You know, it's fun. So um, did you know how the first book would end when you first started writing? I think we had an overall idea of, I mean, like I said, it was, it was a basic concept. But when we actually sat down to actually write it out, it just flowed. It was like bam, 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 and then it was like, okay, now that we've got the whole story, let's go back and put some jokes in there. Let's go back and... And, and, and also do a character pass. The most important yeah. thing, I think, with something like this is that you love the characters, you're invested in the characters. Look, if the journey is, you know, dreams or what, none of that matters. It's like taking a train. If you're sitting next to somebody who's super boring, it's the longest trip ever. If yeah. you're sitting some, next to somebody that's super interesting and you're having a good time, and that character is interesting, the, the, it goes by like this, you want more, you want to hang out, and that's what we, I mean, really, that's what I think about yeah, when, yeah. when we're working together. Absolutely, that's, yeah, it was a very, it's, it's what we try to do is try to make each other laugh. Whoever laughs the most, we put that joke in the book. Whoever I mean, farts the most, we hey. put that in the book. <laughs> and we won't say who it is, but you can, you can guess. <laughs>
Anyway. Since, well, since we're talking about in uncomfortable subjects here for a second, um, since it's just me, <laughs> you, and a thousand classrooms out there, yeah. uh, I've got a really important question for you. Can you tell me who the Nightmare Lord is? Oh, that's a bit, by the uh, way, that's one of the most requested, that's one of the biggest, most, you know, uh, in all the fan mail that we get and the, and the uh, emails and yeah. the texts and everything, everybody wants to know that. Which is perfect, which is what we wanted. We wanted <laughs> yeah. to lead these people on, on a mystery and we're not going to tell you. Yeah, so, Brick, keep right. those coming, by the yeah, way, because right. I would love to know who people think is the Nightmare Lord. You, you're sure you won't tell me? No. Uh, no. Uh, no. Since you won't tell me who the Nightmare Lord is, um, can you at least give me something? Uh, what's in store for Ben in the future? Do you, do you have more books coming out? Yes, we have another book coming out uh, later this year. Um, and we're really excited about that because oh, yeah. it takes our story and really expands on it. Again, I don't want to give things away, mm -hmm. but it opens up the world. Um, there's a lot of really cool dreams and some really scary characters coming and scary nightmares. And there are twists and turns that people hopefully are not gonna see coming. I mean, no. I'm, when, I, when I've hinted, because we use our kids, we bounce a you know, story off our kids. I stole the idea from my son. I might as well share the idea, <laughs> you know, some of the story stuff with him. And they go, you know, that gasp of like, what? Which is really cool. I, I know. That's yeah. the reaction we want from everybody. Well, it sounds to me like you've got some, some readers in the family as already. So that's, oh, a, yeah. that's oh, yeah. a great yeah. thing. Um, so we are going to get to some student questions in a moment. Um, but before we do, I want to tell you the results of the poll that we mentioned oh, earlier. Um, All right. That we voted about Ben's next adventure. Uh, Lucas, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. I'm, I'm... You're going to be drawing this. I'm going to be drawing um, it. OK. The, the results of the poll are in, and the, class, the setting that classrooms across the country want to see Ben in is, I'm sure you're going to not have any idea. The toilet. All right. Perfect. So, okay. That's where we do some of our best creative thinking. <laughs> Lucas, I, I know toilet. <laughs> you want to get set up <laughs> and uh, get drawing. Okay. Um, so Lucas is going to go over to the surface, and we're, we're going to be able to, to show him drawing right into your classroom, and he's going to create Ben in that scenario. Uh, while he's doing that, I wanted to share some of the other scenario, uh, some of the other elements that we heard from classrooms across the country okay. that they'd like to see. Uh, one kid said that he wanted a world ruled by giant pencils. Um, <laughs> I love that. Uh, That's really uh, another cool. one actually sent one in in visual form, and it was really awesome. It was a one-eyed squid. And um, so like the pencils, I would go to the number two. I would be like, yes, it's ruled by the number two pencil. But who's the number <laughs> but, one pencil? You know, because you look on your pencil and you see number two. That's pretty cool. And then our, with the toilet, you know, that's, there's a lot of number two going on. We're, we're talking to, to classrooms already. Their, yeah. their worlds are ruled by number two pencils at this point. I, exactly. Um, so uh, another kid said that, that they really wanted a troll in there. Um, Okay. So, Lucas, we see the yes. progress you're making already. Is, um, is awesome. drawing Ben kind of muscle memory at this point for you, or I, are you... Uh... Yeah, there's... Ben, I've been drawing him so much over the past several years that, I mean, I could, I could pretty much draw him with my eyes closed. Um, By the way, the great thing that, we've, that I've been able to experience is that you take an idea like, okay, it's going to be a, whatever, a dream or a nightmare stuck in a giant toilet or whatever. He starts with, the, again, the character. And look at the face. There's clearly something going on. This is the, about the co collaboration that I love. He, Lucas is an amazing storyteller. So together, we write the stories. But, but when I, it, it inspires me when I see the visual of it. And I think that's what graphic novels do for people. You know, you look at it. It's almost like watching a movie. It's like watching, so, you see the cells, you see the different images. And it's even, uh, to me, it's even better than a bunch of text. So if the text and there's a good balance between the, the creativity on the pictures and the and the text, I think it's uh, you know. <laughs> so <laughs> that's awesome. how how often do you actually get to see him doing this drawing? I, Never. It, this it, is it, the first time because he <laughs> does most of of the drawing. <laughs> that is so good. They can see this right now. Y yeah, I think yeah, so. The classrooms are able to, to oh, watch so watch this good. as it's happening. Don't flush. <laughs> Come on! That's that's, so that's the title of book three, right there. Okay, but let's do some some uh, some creature's arm about to flush. Okay. So give a creature that's reached in a giant hand. Something there, like, we're, we're seeing creativity in action. Yeah, like here. some so ominous. We we talked about oh, their process, look. but now it's happening live on the air for okay, you. Okay, so look at that. 
Look at that. Immediately you know. I mean, I, nothing against talons and, you know, uh, creatures that have big, long nails. But that's clearly some evil character off camera that's trying to... Oh, you're changing his... Oh, there you go. So he's looking at it. Please don't flush. Wow. That is really good. I got a partner Luke. with this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Lucas, available, man. Lucas, <laughs> that's awesome. Thanks, so, bud. Lucas, it, it, it's really amazing. Um, and, and I know that all of the classes out there are excited to see the work that you just did. Um, I, I do want to just make a quick note that the image that, that you just made is going to be tweeted out by Skype in the classroom. So it's going to be, be available after the broadcast so that all of the kids can, can get their own digital copy. Excellent. And by the way, um, is he coming from somewhere else through the pipes? Is he mm. trying to escape? He clearly doesn't want to be flushed right down. <laughs> so where he's going might be somewhere so, that he didn't want to, you know, this is, it, again, thank you. We're going to steal this idea. Thank so, you for voting on that. Now, now that the students have had their say with the illustration, um, I do want to get to some questions from them at home. And our first question is from Hannah, and she is an eighth grader in Kansas. Okay. Um, she submitted a video, so let's take a look. What comics or books did you read growing up? Well, you're so, more of the comic guy. Why don't you take that? Sure. Um, I obviously read, you know, the classics, Superman, Batman, Green Lantern. But I also was very, very big into comic strips. Uh, Calvin and Hobbes being huge for me, Garfield, The Far Side, love The Far Side, um, Bloom County. But when I got older, uh, in high school, college, I discovered um, Jeff Smith's Bone. And that opened up a whole new world because I'd always, as an artist, as, as, a, as a creator, I'd always associated comics, graphic novels as Superman, Batman, Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, well, that could be something else entirely. And anybody who's read Bone knows what I'm talking it's about. Such it's such a great character. Right. And it's not a superhero story. It's, it's this wonderful fantasy. And it just it opened my, my eyes to the world of graphic novels beyond superheroes. It mm -hmm. was incredible. So I started discovering, you know, uh, Raina's books, the Smile books. Um, Kazu's book, Amulet. It's just there, there was an incredible world out there that I had no idea. And it's it now that we're do, we're we're neck deep in Dream Jumper, it just it shows us that we can do so much with these. It does not have to be superheroes. It can I, be anything. I actually I love seeing that graphic novels have kind of come to this point where there's something for everybody out there. Oh, and, absolutely. And uh, it, it's not it isn't just the superheroes. And um, again, it's character. All the stuff you're describing, they're yeah. relatable characters that you want to take the journey with. Um, we are very fortunate there's a big movie studio that's actually going to make a movie out of Dream Jumper. And so, awesome. like, that's a cool thing, you yeah. know? And, but amazing. it all starts with the characters. It mm -hmm. really does. Um, our, our next question came fittingly in illustrated form. Um, it, it's from Jacob from Iowa. Okay, and okay. Uh, here is his question since we... we uh, what was your favorite part of the book to illustrate? Lucas, this is for you. Okay. Um, All right. and, and what was the hardest? Okay, this is the same answer. Uh, the center section with the millions and millions of Knox trolls. <laughs> now, the reason that that was my favorite part because it was, it was an amazing visual. It's just incredible. It's this, it's this great perspective where the, the trolls are in the foreground and then they go all the way back to the background and you see all these dragons and all these evil creatures in the background. But that thing took me three to four days to draw. And I tell you, I almost lost my mind. Let me ask you a question, though. Yeah. When you're drawing that, are you able to draw like a, a small section of them and then just, because it's digital, I uh -huh. guess, you can like copy that and then just kind of cut, cut and paste and add them? Or do you have to? I could do that, but I did not. The whole thing is drawn, pen and ink, no digital. It's so all it's all two pieces of 11 by 17. Because I remember saying to you, I'm like, more Noxus. Like, it's a nightmare. <laughs> it's, right. it's a dream. Whatever. It's got to be big and full. And Our editor said the same thing, too. And I'm like, guys. Guys, we've got like 10,000 here. Right. It's like, no, 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 we got to do more. But you're right, though. I mean, Were you seeing Noxes in your dreams? Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> so just to confirm, you drew every single one of those trolls. Absolutely. Did, did, do you have an actual count of them? or, or I do we... not, okay. but there so is. We, we oh, yeah, had... no, are there, are there little, is there any hidden ones in there? There's one hidden Nox hand. I mean, all you see for the most part are the faces and the eyes and the horns. But, but there's there is one in hand in there. And the last school visit I did was I said, okay, whatever kid can find that hand, got a free book. And one kid did. He's like, 
right there. So it's almost kind of like, uh, uh, you know, those, uh, what are those books called? Uh, like the Where's Waldo books. Right, yeah. right, right. So, right. Uh, so we do have that. If you, so that's a, like a fun little Easter egg. And that's another right. thing throughout this whole book. Easter eggs everywhere. Yeah. Book Child two. Children across America are now opening up to that page to find <laughs> right, that. Right. Find control. that hand, find that um, That's cool. So it, you had also earlier to me, it mentioned to me uh, another point that you were drawing. Um, mm -hmm. And it was when the, you were doing the cover. Right. That, that, that was kind of a great moment for you. It was amazing because we had worked on this for so long and we were so proud of it and then when we finally got to the cover it was like it was it was like the capper to like this perfect thing we created it was like this is going to happen they're going to publish this thing kids are going to read this kids are going to love it it was just it was a it was a wonderful moment of accomplishment but but with you know, we had written the entire book how do you encapsulate all of that in one image right. that's gonna interest people enough to turn the page and open it up and everything. And we had a few different ideas. Yeah. And when we went with this, I mean, through the help of our amazing editor and the people at uh, Scholastic, this, you know, it, it, you look and you're like, wait a minute, he's hanging on for dear life. There's something going on mm -hmm. in the face here. Like this really turned out to be, I think, the perfect image. Yeah, you know, for for book one and then book two. Hopefully, people will love that. Yeah, that cover I, I art as well. Kind of look at it and want to figure out why he's given such such shade to, <laughs> as, <laughs> yeah, as he's right. flying. Um, so I, I want to go to another video question, and um, this one is from Jacob, who is from my home state of New Jersey. So let, let's see what Jacob has to say. Did you ever want to be an author or an illustrator growing up? That's a really good question. Yeah. Um, I had, had uh, written, you know, I loved English growing up. That was my subject. I loved creative writing. And at first, you think of creative writing, and you're like, okay, this has, because in school, usually it's, okay, it has to be 500 words, or it has to be 2,000 words, or whatever. And it's daunting. You look at that. But once you get into it, and you lose yourself in the, cre in the characters you're talking about and stuff, it, it goes by so quickly, and mm -hmm. you can't wait, at, at least for me. I just couldn't wait to tell stories, and to be silly, and to get an emotion out of people. So... I love English and writing was, you know, just always something that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. In this form, you know, I, I've written TV shows, I've written movies, and this has been one of the best collaborations and the most fun for yeah. me because you can, anything, dreams can take you anywhere. Mm -hmm. No, I've been, um, on, I've been drawing cartoons my whole life. And there was a point where I realized that, that it's actually, you're actually writing these things. Because I, in my mind, I always pictured it was just being a cartoonist. I was mm -hmm. just drawing stuff, but you're actually writing. And so I, from, I guess from early on, I always wanted to do this. I just didn't understand that it, there, was a, there was actual writing involved. I thought, hey, I'm just drawing fun pictures, you know. But like you were saying, this, if, if you can do a collaboration, do it. Because it's so much fun. And this has been tremendous. This has been such a fun experience. And anybody can do it. Yeah. Guys, try this. I mean, you're in your class right now and you're thinking, you know what, I've had an idea or I doodle and that could be a story. Do it. Yeah. Just do it. It's so much fun and you never know where it's going to lead. Oh, yeah. So, it, Greg, uh, the next question is going to be for you, um, okay. and it's from Ethan, and it's also in visual form, um, but he wants to know, why did you want to be a graphic novelist specifically? You, you said that you read a lot growing up. Yeah. Um, why, what, what is it about graphic novels that really said, I want to do this? Well, I mean, as an actor, I come from, a, it's a visual medium, and I have always, you know, I've portrayed characters, and I... I, when in, in TV and film we do a thing, you know, it's, oh, it's always storyboarded. Mm -hmm. We work together on the stuff that, that I shoot, the commercials and, and TV, and um, you know, we do, we do the storyboards to make sure that we get the images right, and, and, it, and it encourages you and it, and it uh, helps your creativity. So I didn't really want to do a graphic novel, I didn't know anything about it, but when we spoke about it, mm -hmm. and also, you know, again, my best friend being such a creative genius, saying, no, this is a graphic novel, it really, um, it, it, when we started, I was like, this is what I would love to do. And we have so many more ideas that we're, we have a lot of work to do on the series, uh, Dream Jumper, but it's, it's turned into kind of the perfect collaboration. Sure. Because we see this, and we see the story so you know, vividly, and then, of course, you know, Lucas, when he draws, it just inspires so much more. So um, it, it's a very cool thing to, to, to do is work on a graphic novel. So, and, and what about readers who... who really are drawn to graphic novels. I know that it, it's uh, a whole lot more digestible for some readers that they, they get that visual support from them. Is that something that you think about when, when you're writing? I mean, we hear, I hear about the accomplishment of finishing a book. I was one of those guys that, that uh, when I was a kid that I would start and then I would get 
you know, I'd just get bored or I'd start something else and start something else. And I'd have a bunch of books that I hadn't finished. Mm -hmm. One of the things that's really great about graphic novels is you can get through them very quickly. There's a sense of accomplishment and you truly have gone from A to Z in a story and you can feel great about it and you want more. You know, that's the thing. Is you can yeah. finish our book in an hour, a half hour. I mean, it's just, it, you go through it and you consume it really quickly. But it's like watching a movie or a TV sure. show, you know. And it's a great gateway into other graphic novels and into eventually into novels, you know. So, I mean, it's, it's just a tremendous thing, a tremendous tool for kids who are reluctant readers. Yes. So um, Once you get into reading, you see how important it is. It's so great. Well, get lost in a book. Whether mm -hmm. it's a graphic novel or a novel, just get lost in it. It's, it's just, it's the best. Um, Lucas, it... Brady from Mrs. Rough Corners class has a question that is just for you, okay. um, and we're going to watch that on video. Here he is. My question is, how, what classes should you take to be a graphic artist? Great question. Yeah, yeah. Write some schedules. Well, let's see. Okay, um, I'm going to disappoint a lot of kids here, but one of the more important ones to take is English and writing because my favorite class, right? It's, my favorite it, subject. I know, but it's it's. The writing is the most important part of, the, of, of a graphic novel, of anything, of any book, any story. It's the writing. Not an art but class. I would, I would say that you can learn a lot of art stuff on your own. Uh, I took art school, which was, uh, you know, more, we won't get into that. But um, I would say that if I could do it all over again, I would focus more on the creative writing classes. Well, watching you sketch, I was like, okay, you're starting with a circle. And a, is there a method to, is there a book that you recommend for kids? Yeah, there's, there's a couple of really great books that teach you perspective, teach you how to draw uh, people in, in different poses. Um, and it's, I don't know if I should be plugging it, but it's, it's called How to Draw the Marvel Way. And it, 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 it teaches kids a lot about perspective and a lot about angles. And a lot of different college courses, like Art 101, will teach you the same thing. So if you want to take that at college, that's, that's fantastic. Or in high school, because I did that as well, and I did learn a lot. But there are books available now, so many more books than when I was in high school. Or even go online and just search, yes. you know, how to sketch a face or something. Right. Start there. I mean, you can learn how to play the guitar online. Why not, Absolutely. you know, do that? And again... If you're not with, if you can't get together with the person you're collaborating with, Skype with them. I mean, absolutely, that's what we do, and, yeah. it, and it works. Absolutely. Um, so it, I, I'm gonna ask you to to uh, go a little bit off script here. And sure. Since you since you're talking so much about actually drawing the character, okay. uh, we were wondering if you might be able to do one more okay. illustration for us. All right. We, yeah. we've, so I'm we, glad you were talking to him and not me because <laughs> I do not do the drawing here. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. So, do we want to go to one of our other scenarios? So maybe Ben drunk the, to the the size of a penny. Okay. Or, let's let's draw it. Let's draw that. That's uh, good. Let's make this a little dark. So you can draw that face very tiny. Hey, let's see here. We will draw him tiny, tiny, tiny. Oops. We gotta get this going here. There we go. Tiny face. So I also want to clarify, we're drawing on a surface here, um, but you normally, when you start sketching, it, it is in pencil, right? Yeah, I don't normally do uh, digital art. So we're all enjoying this, uh, watching me. Hopefully I won't fall on my face, but uh, normally all my stuff is pen and ink. Um, this we is have, actually really incredible drawing on this tool. And we also have like an incredible uh, colorist, I have to say. Um, Guy Major, it, 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 when you look at some of the images in here, even something like this, where there's a lamp on a, on a table, to get the light, it actually, there are some images here that you almost feel like you have to squint, you know, when, when, uh, when Ben is using his power, and it just becomes so bright. How do you do that with a, just a, you know, an image on a, on a page? I don't think uh, a lot of the kids realize that this is actually something that happens, that Lucas is doing the illustrations and then he, he goes into inking, um, but then someone else comes in and does the coloring. Um, I, I know we looked at one of those images earlier. Um, I keep calling it the Thum image. Um, mm -hmm. It's with Ben, with all of that brilliant orange behind it, and it just it looks awesome. It really looks like the page is lit up, and you don't get that from, you know, from the pencil, certainly, and then from the ink. And there's many times when I'll say, oh, that's really cool, where I'll say, okay, you know, we we'll both look at it and we go, this looks really cool. And then uh, Lucas will say, trust me, Guy's going to just absolutely make this look. It, that's why it's a collaboration. Every step, it gets better and better and better. That's great. That, so um, it, while, while Lucas is still drawing, I wanted to... to what should he say? 
Um, uh -oh. He should say dropping dimes, even though that's not. <laughs> <laughs> Even though that's not a dime. Oh, okay. Those basketball players out there know what I'm talking about. Dropping dimes. Hmm. That's pretty cool. What's that? So, say, what? What? Yeah. Or change. I'm looking for change. <laughs> Got any change? Got any change? That's great. Come on, that's really cool. So, so Lucas, being that a kid has already put it in, can we put in a giant number two pencil in there? Is, is that oh, a sure. possibility? Oh, sure, good. sure. Not, not that I want to inter interfere with the creative process. No, no, no. no really two of you have... And again, this is all about perspective, right? right? So you've got to show the other objects, obviously, to show how small he is. So let's see here. We got to, oh, that's going to be one giant pencil. I don't know if I'm uh, going to You know what? In there. Do it as if somebody evil is about to poke him with a number two pencil. <laughs> have it come in, have it come in from that side, and, and maybe that talon is holding it. I'm putting him on the spot. Oh, that's awesome. All right, here. I think I can actually turn this. Oh, I can. Oh, how cool so. that is. Oh. We'll bring pencils in somehow. Um. I love that. Oh, it's a pencil with a personality. It's an evil pencil. That's even better. Number two. Uh, <laughs> number two! <laughs> That's really great. I love that. See, now so, all of a sudden, this becomes something else. Now I'm thinking about backstories of the pencil and where it came from and the wood and the trees that, that it took to make the pencil. That is awesome. He's trapped. He's he can't trapped move. between uh, Abraham Lincoln. Is that who's on the penny? I, yeah. Well, that's Abraham a really Lincoln terrible and, uh, an evil pencil. I love terrible that. Terrible Abraham Lincoln. No, oh, that's I'm a ashamed good of Lincoln. Lincoln. That's a good Lincoln. Does he wear a bow tie? I think he does. He, he has a beard, and that's what matters. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> does he wear the top hat and the penny? I don't know. No, no, no. That's good. So, uh, while you're finishing up there, I, I wanted to get to one of the questions we had from, from Twitter. Okay. And um, it's from Mrs. Jodo's class. Um, she wants to know, and I think I already know the answer to this, is do you put people you know in the stories? Um, yes. So, uh, by the way, we had a question from Jacob earlier. I have a son named Jacob. Mm -hmm. um, and the lead character is named Ben because my son, Ben, had this dream. And that is what inspired this entire thing. I wanted to actually write on the book, inspired by a dream, you know, uh, from Ben Grunberg. He's a baseball player. He's like, eh, it's not cool. Now he thinks it's the coolest thing in the world. So I think <laughs> in book two. Um, and, and by the way, we have the foreword is written by J.J. Abrams in the book. And then Kevin Smith is doing the foreword for the second book. Right. So awesome. it's really, really cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, we try to, to stick characters yeah, we put names in everywhere. I mean, we've got, uh, I don't want to give too much away about book two, but we do have names of friends and family in book so, two. So we have and to look for those Easter eggs is what you're oh, saying. Oh, absolutely. I'm telling you, book one has a ton. Book two is just off the charts. And Ben is, is a kid in school, so he's got all these friends and they're all these different characters. So we do have, you know, the ability to use a lot of people that we know so. and, and kind of use them. I mean, there are some references to some people and he, they don't particularly know that it's them. That's right. and he, we, should, we should just leave it at that. Um, Michelle Galloway from, from Twitter also sent us in something, and I, I'm not sure that I know this one yet, but uh, maybe you can help me. Why did you use Applewood bacon for the rope? <laughs> that was one of the things where, where we were trying to make each other laugh so hard, yeah. and it was just so bizarre we came up with Applewood bacon. We were both crying. It was, by the way, they're dreams. That's the yeah. thing that we love about this, is anything can happen you can be tied up, you can all of a sudden, you know, be swimming in ranch dressing. I mean, anything can happen. Bacon and, I have and ranch dressing, I this is a place I want to go. By the way, we love bacon and ranch dressing. Right. Um, we, should, we should have some over here, right? Yeah, yeah. but, but it's, it's really cool that it is dreams that we're dealing with. So it's not the real world, it's this other world. So right. anything really can happen. And in a good way and a bad way. I mean, that's, there are things that you're scared of. We have a whole thing in the book where Doctors, you know, doctors are scary. Needles are scary. If you're a doctor and you work with needles, they're not scary. But it's to kids and certainly to us growing up. Yeah. So we made that a, a kind of a scary thing. And you know, so we're playing with the good and the bad. And why not tie somebody up with bacon instead of just using <laughs> rope? That's fun. Um, so 
I think you already answered this a little bit. Uh, you made reference to the fact that the two of you work together so well. Um, but what do you do when you get writer's block? Do, do, do you, do you ha rely on each other? Do you rely on the outside world? Do you just have to take a walk? We, well, we reference a lot of things that, are, that we're big fans of. Um, yeah. And not because I'm in Star Wars, but like the characters of Star Wars. And also we have a lot of really creative friends. That's the other thing. If, if you guys get to, a, if you're writing something and you get to a roadblock, you know, that's a very natural thing. Mm -hmm. So if you're not working with somebody, I mean, usually it's, it's very bizarre for the both of us. Like I'll be like, well, what do we do with it? And Lucas is right there or I'm right there for him. Right. But reach out to friends. I mean, there's nothing yeah. wrong with saying, hey, what about this? The, the bus gets to a cliff. Should it, I don't know what to do. Should it hang over? Should it, you know, and then right. just talk it out. Or even go to a favorite movie that you like, or you know, a, a, another graphic novel that you just absolutely love. I mean, there's, and then go for a walk, like you were saying. That actually can really help. You as know, well. what really helps with writer's block: hmm. applewood bacon. <laughs> it kind of helps. That is everything. the answer. Absolutely so hopefully, true. everyone on at least on the West Coast has bacon for lunch. Yeah, any kind um, of bacon. Bacon's bacon, bacon for anything. Yeah. Yeah. That, that actually, I, I'm being told that that was actually one of the most popular questions that has come in through chat. Lots and lots of classrooms have asked that. Oh, um, oh. I also have a question from Mrs. Uh, Gary Arrow's class. Um, I hope I got that right. Um, which part of the book did you illustrate first? Did, did you start in oh, sequence wow. or? That's a great question. I that, don't even know the answer. Well, it, there were actually, there's two versions of Dream Jumper, if you remember. We had illustrated the whole thing oh, out yeah, in the very, right. very beginning. Mm -hmm. So I want to say it was page one. I think that that was the first thing we did. But there, the other version of Dream Jumper is a slightly different. So um, the very, very first thing within Dream Jumper is actually not in this book. It was, it was edited out. But um, it was, I started at the beginning, page one. So. Um, that's, yeah, so I mean. I mean, there are, do, do, you, do you ever get to a thing where you go, oh, you know what, there's something later on in the book, but I really have a great idea, yeah. and you'll do a little sketch so you don't forget? Oh, absolutely, yeah, there's, yeah, we, um, a lot of that stuff where I will, I'll pace it out, where it's, I, I will write it on, even if, if I think I'm gonna forget it, I will write it on every single page. Don't forget, page 64, gotta have this, gotta have so this. So let's remember something, because I'm just thinking of it now for later. Uh, yeah. Jake, his buddy, is uh, a bit of a genius, mm -hmm. right? right? So we should make Jake have writer's block. And oh. what does that, is that a block in the road like I came across in traffic this morning? <laughs> is, is like, what does, what is the, you know, uh, the, the physical manifestation of writer's block? That, oh that would God. be really cool. That would be incredible. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. we're doing we Write it down. Yeah, look out for it. So, um, <laughs> McLean, what a great name uh, from Mrs. Ruffcorn's class, wants to know why is it called Ward Z? Oh. Ooh, that's okay. a good question. Well, I think uh, we were just trying to use something that was closely associated with sleep. So like if you're reading a comic, you'll see Z when somebody's mm -hmm. asleep, you'll see a bunch of Zs. So I think that that's where the original idea of that came from. And Nightmare, uh, if you look up and you search all about dreams, there are, there's, there are conditions. I mean, people get trapped in sleep states. Th yeah. th there's a lot of stuff that we did research in this. Um, uh, you know, when you wake up in the middle of the night, you have such a vivid dream. People sleepwalk. We're exploring sleepwalking. There's so many different elements. Snooze. When you hit that snooze button, is it just you hitting snooze and going back to sleep, or does is that something that somebody's trying to control you in the sleep state? I mean, right. we there's so much. It's like the ocean. Like there's so much in the ocean we don't know. Right. There's so much in space we don't know. There's so much in the brain that we don't know. So if you really think about these worlds. You know, I mean, I, the brain and space, worlds, yeah, you can think of it that way. And if you think about sleep, sleep is the unknown. You turn off the light, it's dark, you close your eyes, you've lost control. Absolutely lost control in sleep. And that's something that we talk about all the time is, who's controlling us? Are you in control in sleep? Why am I having, they say you have 100, 200, 300, maybe thousands of dreams and you only maybe remember one of them. Mm -hmm. Why? Who's wiping that out? There's so much mystery and I think, you know, things to explore. That's why this book series hopefully will go on with your support. Uh, so for, so for when I oversleep, the, the snooze button is not within my control is... Dude, when you... Yeah, that's right. You've heard the term, when you <laughs> snooze, you lose. That Take that to the most evil place you can possibly take it. That's where we want to explore. So um, I've got another question from the chat box. Uh, which one was your favorite of the weird kids on the bus? Oh, oh that's a good question. Um, I liked... 
Francesco because that's what I was gonna say because we kind of he, he we treat him almost like a Star Wars character where we go he has a lot of backstory but we only kind of hint at him every now and then but in book two he actually has a really important moment and it's a really cool moment so he was I think my favorite one because it was almost like he was this throwaway character yeah but we refer to him throughout the book when, when, when Ben gets on the bus and he's walking and you see all these different characters we wanted to have sort of a table of contents of the dreams that we're gonna be exploring. Mm -hmm. And when you see these characters, if they're really well-defined and well-drawn, and which they are, hopefully people pick up on this, they go, oh, that guy's dreams are gonna be crazy. Her <laughs> dreams are gonna be amazing. You know, so that's why, you know, these characters can be a little bit over the top, but relatable in a way that, I mean, look, they're, they're, they're characters in school, they're characters in life that you go, man, I love, I, I wish I was more like that person. Mm -hmm. You know, they're really bizarre, but in a great way, or they're funny all the time. Goofballs, brilliant people, shy people. There's so much to that, and I think that could define dreams. I mean, sure. That's what so, so now we have reason to go back and reread if we've already yes. read and, and keep an eye out on those kids. So yeah, I have absolutely. one last uh, question by video. Uh, it, it's from Harrison. Uh, Harrison has an awesome cast. I, I, I really like him there. Oh, cool. uh, here is his question. Okay. My question is, how long does it take to make a Dream Jumper book? Ooh. Well, That's for tough. me, not very long. <laughs> uh, we end up we end up writing over a few months yeah. and coming up with the story, and then it changes. The problem is with something like this is there's and it's only it's not it's only a problem for you is mm -hmm. the amount of work. So if we come up with you know the story that might take a, a certain amount of time, but then Lucas has to go off because I don't do any of the drawing and illustrate all of what we've come up with, and then all of a sudden you'll call me and go. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I have a better idea for this sweet sequence or <laughs> this. And it just means more work for you. Yeah. So the, the, but the initial fun. book was like a year, I think. Um, the process of, of writing and illustrating for book one took about a year. And that's actually pretty normal because book yep. two did about the same. We took a couple of months, wrote the story, and then uh, we waited for notes from the editors. And then there's a process of where I have to give in a, a bunch of thumbnails. And then once the thumbnails are approved, pencils. And then once the pencils are approved, inks, and then on to the colors. So uh, it does take about a year. I'll say this, for people that are thinking about writing a story, don't get in your own way. Your kids, you should keep the excitement and you know, why should you creatively stand in your own way and go, well, that won't work because. Mm -hmm. Don't ever think that. Keep writing, keep writing, keep writing, don't stop. Because right. when you finish a book or a script, it's such a huge accomplishment. Most people, 99% of people will say, I have an idea, and they'll say they're gonna write something and they don't do it. Do it because it's the best feeling in the world. Don't do it for any other reason just be, other than you wanna be creative and you wanna enjoy what you're doing because right. it's always gonna be better if you care about it and love it. So, so that actually leads me perfectly into my last question for you, um, which is do you have any additional advice for all of the aspiring writers, illustrators, graphic novelists out there. Um, what can they do to help themselves live their dream? <laughs> what do you say? Um, I say, uh, you know, just go. Yeah. Just do it. Don't, um, again, you know, don't let anybody tell you that what you're doing is not the best. Because if you're thinking of something great, it's inspiring. Oh, and also, don't tell everybody about your idea. That's something yeah, that we've yeah. learned because the, you know, when you, when you say, I have a great idea and then you share it with somebody, the reaction that you get from that person is now it's enough that maybe you don't even need to write it. Right. If you didn't tell everybody, then you're waiting for that reaction and you just keep writing and writing. J.J. Abrams, again, brilliant filmmaker, brilliant writer. I've known him since I was your age, guys, since we were four, younger than you, much younger. Um, and I'll call him up and say, I have an idea for something. And he goes, I don't want to hear it. Write it. Mm -hmm. And he'll say it over and over and over again. Yeah. So if you have an idea, we don't want to hear it. <laughs> write it. Just write do it, it, right? Just, just do just, it. Just do it. Yeah. And don't be afraid to research. Don't be afraid, okay, my idea might be too similar to this. Read everything. Because that way you won't be blindsided later on. You mean you just, you just want to immerse yourself in everything you can. And, and ask your teachers, talk to your teacher about this. Say, you know what, and you don't have to do it in front of it. Don't ever be ashamed. Don't ever say, oh, it's, it's maybe a little silly and maybe it's a... Talk to your teacher about it. That's what the teachers are there for. They're heroes. They're, they're the ones that are going to encourage you and go, okay, mm. 
here's what, you know, just, just nurture that, that creativity. Right. That's what they're there for, and they're amazing. They did that for me, I know they did that oh, they, for you. Absolutely, they're the best. To, to, if, especially if you're thinking about doing some kind of collaboration, they will help you. It won't be like you're, you're, you're ruining your idea. They will guide you in the best possible way. And if they say that idea is not good, they're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so, Greg and Lucas, I, I can't thank you enough for thank you. taking the time to speak with me and thousands of students today. Um, we're all so excited about Dream Jumper, I, and I know that kids who haven't read it yet are gonna be heading out to the bookstores to buy a copy, and that those who already have are going to be rereading it, looking for those Easter eggs. Yeah. Um, I would also like to thank Microsoft and Skype in the Classroom for demonstrating an amazing commitment to literacy in bringing this broadcast to you today. Uh, just so everyone knows, it is going to be posted, uh, the whole broadcast is gonna be reposted for uh, watching a little bit later today. Um, most of all though, I want to thank you, all of the teachers, all of the librarians, all of the students for tuning in I hope that you are able to enjoy more of Teach Graphics Week for the entire week and that you keep reading.